Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we are back with another eclipse season, third eclipse. Mm -hmm. And this is I am seeing on July fifth, which is Sunday, New Delhi. Uh, this is the horoscope of twelve sixteen in the afternoon, and this comes to Sun nineteen degrees of Gemini, and Moon is around twenty thirty seven. So. Around afternoon Indian Standard Time on the, this Sunday, there is this eclipse. So the planets are as follows. Sun is in Sagittarius, of course, with Rahu and Mercury, retrograde Mercury. Then Moon, Jupiter and Ketu is conjunct in the sign of Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Saturn is in Capricorn as usual and we have Venus direct in Rohini Nakshatra in the sign of Taurus. All right, so a very interesting eclipse. This is happening in the original 3-9 uh, axis of the Kal Purush Kundli, which is uh, Sagittarius, the ninth house and third house is the house of Gemini. And what about Rahu and Ketu? Rahu is pretty far from this eclipse. He is almost like at four degrees. And uh, yeah, so the distance is quite a bit, I would say. So, but anyways, either way, this, this is a prominent eclipse. All right, so this is an eclipse which is happening with Jupiter. So Jupiter is conjoined the moon and this is a lunar eclipse. So <clears throat> the moon is more important. Why? Because... So you have to understand what, what's the difference between sun and moon basically. Many times people confuse. They think sun is external, moon is internal. Well, uh, it's not so simple. Uh, and people say ascendant shows the focus. So it is at a practical level, it is impossible to differentiate sun, moon and ascendant. Okay? It's almost impossible. I mean, you cannot, because anything internal or external has three uh, counterparts. Okay. One is the sun, which is our conception of what we want in life or what we think we need. Okay? And then moon shows how we feel about what we already have. Okay? Sun is like the kingdom. And moon shows how we feel about our kingdom. Then ascendant shows uh, what is our focus actually. Hmm? Are we focused in what we think we need? So sometimes people say, oh, I want to become a millionaire. But then are you focused? Are you ready to make the sacrifice? Well, I'm not. And sometimes people, they want to become a millionaire or a billionaire. They are very focused. But at the end, when they get all the money, they are unhappy. So that's like a problem with the moon. So there you see how you differentiate. So if sun is not good, then the person may not have any goal. If the ascendant is not good, the person may not have focus in that particular goal. And if moon is not good, the person may not enjoy what the person has. Okay. So this is how you differentiate. But again, as I said, it's very difficult. So now in this case, what is happening? Uh, Jupiter is, uh, luckily he is back to uh, Sagittarius, although he's still retrograde and he will be there uh, retrograde for some more time and then he will be uh, direct and finally by end of this year he will move into Capricorn and um, Rahu Ketu will be there in these signs uh, till September so the thing here is this eclipse is happening in conjunction with uh, Jupiter and Jupiter is the lord of the sign where moon is placed during this eclipse okay so this is uh, <coughs> If you if you check the uh, if you check the degrees, it is uh, literally like twenty degrees. So that is third pada of uh, Purva Shada. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean if you take around twelve, then it's third pada Purva Shada, of course. So the thing is, um, Purva Shada is a very beautiful nakshatra. It's a nakshatra of cleansing, basically. Okay, the winnowing basket uh, is represented by Purva Shada. So. Uh, during these days, actually, uh, a lot of turbulence has gone, especially Venus was retrograde, Mercury is still retrograde, Jupiter is retrograde, Saturn is retrograde. So uh, the last eclipse, uh, lunar eclipse was 
uh, around in Scorpio and it was uh, very devastating. Most of you have told me that uh, you are getting a lot of negative thoughts, a lot of, um, many people said they were getting suicidal tendencies. Many people developed on uh, this anxiety, panic attacks and all, all this crazy stuff which was happening. But this eclipse, now this is a very peculiar eclipse, this one which is going to happen on Sunday. <clears throat> There is good and bad both, but if you know how to use what properly, then you can uh, actually understand what's happening, okay, rather than uh, getting obsessed about it, all right. So let's discuss this in short today, and as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please uh, subscribe to it below, and if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit, then you can also go to my website below. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And you must find him because this is happening in Sagittarius. Okay, so what is Sagittarius? Sagittarius, in one word, shows uh, belief in anything higher than matter. That's it. That's what Sagittarius is. Anything which you... Uh, see, Jupiter represents ether element. So anything which is, so, so for example, people think that Venus sustains relationships. Uh, Venus doesn't exactly sustain relationships. Jupiter sustains relationships. Why? Because Jupiter is, imagine if Jupiter was not there, you cannot have a relationship. Uh, having physical enjoyment is different, but having a relationship or a committed marriage is a totally different scenario. Why? Because Jupiter gives you that belief that, yes, I will be able to maintain this relationship. Or marriage or mother father relationship or brother sister husband wife any relationship basically and i'll be able to continue lifelong and that person also wants the same so imagine you are in a relationship with somebody and constantly you are under threat that that person doesn't want to stay with you will you will you ever be able to stay in such a relationship never 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 right <laughs> you may be very committed but for you to remain committed, you also have to be uh, reassured. Reassured, not that you have to be reassured again and again and again, but internally you have to have this belief that, yes, that person also wants this relationship to work. So if you do not have that belief and you are always doubting that person, then you yourself will not be able to continue that relationship, right? So that is what is Jupiter. And uh, Jupiter at a mundane sense represents all the relationships of this world actually the connection that you feel with somebody that is the sign sagittarius people think that's taurus or that's libra no that is not that is actually jupiter and that's a, a pisces energy actually where because that is why venus gets exalted in pisces you see and at a higher sense it can uh, represent spiritual uh, progress okay so therefore that's the very uh, beautiful secret if you want to improve your relationships any relationship that you have in include spiritual components because uh, why i'm saying all these things here today because uh, this eclipse uh, can give you a feeling that there are things which you are lacking within your relationships or not 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 in husband wife relationship any relationships okay you may feel this because uh, because this Ketu is there, you see. When Ketu is there, now Ketu is exalted in Sagittarius. Don't forget that, okay? So when Ketu is there, you may feel that uh, now Ketu's exaltation is a very uh, peculiar energy. Don't think that, oh, it's a very nice energy. Ketu is Ketu after all. Now, it, does it mean that it's bad? No, it's not bad also. It means... See, I always uh, say this, uh, the sign of exaltation is more difficult than the sign of debilitation. Debilitation is very easy. Why? Because debility means, they say, no, the word Nietzsche is used. used. Nietzsche means you are just sleeping, you know, doing nothing, you are not interested. It's like people these days, they uh, order some food online and they are just sitting and eating in the couch, watching TV, Netflix, doing nothing, just wasting their valuable human life. So that's an example of debilitation and exaltation is like somebody who is very much committed to his or her life purpose. Okay, That can be anything, career or home, family, creativity, anything that can be. So if you feel that, um, so there, therefore exaltation is very difficult. It takes a lot of work. Therefore, everybody likes the sign of debilitation. Nobody likes exaltation. People, they 
they theoretically like exaltation but when it comes to exaltation they they see nightmares why because it pulls you and forces you to do things which you absolutely hate which gives you progress ultimately so if you have any problem in life just see where that that area specific which planet represents and where does that planet gets exalted if you just develop those traits your life will be near perfect <laughs> of course we cannot become perfect that's not the goal the agenda is not to be like some illusory perfectionist which uh, you see in instagram that's not the point but the agenda is we should try to become our best version so if you want to do that then you have to get to the sign of exaltation so ketu is in sagittarius he is exalted there so he wants that to get rid of this confusion within relationships you include spiritual practices and because jupiter is there jupiter is the guru the guide the counselor the mentor the helper the senior the elder these are the things which jupiter represents so if you take help of your seniors your guides your counselors your mentors and if you read scriptures like the bhagavad gita then this is the best time when you can actually take uh, every relationship that you have in this world to a new level actually why do i say relationships because see uh, many times people just think venus or mercury shows relationships mercury shows friendships but we have to understand all the planets every planet is ultimate see ultimately moon is the most important planet in astrology why because at the end of the day if you don't feel good what is the use of having things or people i know so many people who have the most attractive partners the most rich the most intelligent partners the most uh, apparently committed partners but somehow they are not happy for some reason so it's useless for them they feel as if it's useless because ultimately all the planetary energies they come and they the mind is like see if you see the moon moon receives the light of the sun okay so sun is like this planet which is illuminating the entire universe it's illuminating mercury venus the earth mars rahu ketu whichever i mean all the planets okay but ultimately the light is received by the moon so therefore it is very crucial that we take care of the moon our mental health okay because if we are not happy inside then uh, this um, then there's no use of having a good sun or a good ascendant good venus or good mercury it, it simply does not work because i have seen uh, horoscopes where the moon is well supported and even if things are not very good you know, the seventh lord is badly placed venus is afflicted they are still happy with the relationships happy, happy means they 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 make peace with the fact that certain things are beyond my control okay Uh, so suppose somebody has uh, doesn't have a very good marriage they have a decent marriage you know a lot of ups and downs so if the moon is good the person can easily make peace with that fact but if moon is not good then the person cannot digest that the person cannot uh, receive that light okay then the person submerges into depression anxiety panic and the person gets suicidal thoughts and the person or the person goes to other extreme you know violence and harms himself or herself harms others actually okay so therefore uh, you should include spiritual practices with, within your relationships and how you can do this because uh, the sun which uh, the sun shows uh, the manifestation of things externally so they can the sun can show your relationships at times okay and moon can show how you feel through the relationship so therefore the the solar energy is with this retrograde mercury in uh, gemini with rahu rahu is also exalted there okay again exaltation a difficult energy so uh, therefore you can do this through communication so so for example if you have uh, if you if you are having any friendship or any relationship with somebody then now is the best time that you uh, read and discuss about our uh, epics like ramayana and mahabharat and shrimad bhagavatam bhagavad gita and i'm really delighted i have started this uh, quiz in my instagram page uh, exotic_astrology and 
uh, I'm making this short five minutes, six minutes video also every day and night uh, Indian time if you see or evening around. And I'm very uh, delighted to see the response that I have got, you know, because many times people have been telling me that we, you are hand having these quizzes, but we don't know the answer. So can you please explain? So yeah, short, short videos I'm making. So this is one initiative I'm taking from my side. So similarly, if you also want then, uh, you can also share stuff in YouTube. You can also share stuff in Instagram. And uh, because now Jupiter is in Sagittarius, therefore um, he is Lord. He is the Lord of the signs. So he is helping this Moon and Ketu. So how this manifests is, if you take shelter of uh, like Jupiter, Jupiterian people more, then this eclipse will be fantastic for you. Actually, this will be the best time. Actually, if you uh, want so. If you are having struggle in any area of life, then you should improve your communication because the solar energy is in Gemini, you see, which is communication. And ultimately, because the moon is in Sagittarius, so you will externally what can happen, you may feel that you are just communicating, okay? Or you are writing, or you are speaking, or you are you are processing your thoughts. Too many thoughts are going and coming because of this Mercury's retrogression. But because the uh, lunar energy is in Sagittarius, so internally you will feel that rather than me uh, guiding somebody, I should take guidance from somebody. Okay, So that feeling you will get. So now this is a very good time to uh, seek guidance from others and uh, also give guidance to others. So you can have this balance. Okay, So uh, the Sagittarius part can give you a need to have guidance from others and the Gemini part can give you a need to give guidance to others okay but uh, you have to always understand that uh, Jupiter is a greater benefit than Mercury so it is more important to seek knowledge before you give it to others okay because many times people are very much enthusiastic to uh, give knowledge but they themselves are not enthusiastic to gain knowledge okay because uh, Jupiter is the significator of years. So one who has heard properly, only he or she can speak properly. So unless you hear enough, then uh, till that time you cannot uh, spread any knowledge actually. Okay? And the best way to, uh, the best things to hear is the uh, vibrations of the scriptures. Okay. So vibrations of the Bhagavad Gita and or any topic. This is a, also a fantastic time uh, to revamp your technical skills. If you like, for my case, I am doing a lot of certification courses uh, from online websites you know, like Linux Academy, Udemy, uh, uh, Coursera and all this. You know, I'm doing all these things uh, myself. I'm doing it voluntarily because Sagittarius is the sign of higher learning. So you can have uh, learning also materialistic subjects also you can learn. And you can also take guidance from your seniors and uh, depending on your dashas ultimately it will be decided uh, what is going on with your uh, life okay so therefore ultimately it will be decided depending on the houses which the dasha lords indicate so so if your dasha lords are indicating like seventh house for example okay so this can show there is a greater need to uh, include spirituality within married life if it is fifth house, then it can show children. Okay, so if it's tenth house, then it can show career. If you are in ninth house, PhD work or masters, then it can show you know that that kind of learning. And and yeah, it depends on the nature of the planets also. What kind of planets they are. Okay, if it's Rahu, it can be in a bit different, untraditional, uh, unconventional way. Okay, so <clears throat> therefore, first you should uh, analyze your dashas. And um, you should uh, protect your mental health actually, okay. So I'll put a video on the moon remedies of sun, moon and ascendant or some other videos here if you have not watched, okay. Hopefully if you want more guidance on that, you can watch these videos. And apart from that, uh, the focus of this uh, eclipse is that you try to take everything in your life to the next level, okay. Don't don't be superficial. Don't stay in the surface. Take try to take it to the next level. When you try, then you will see that you will obtain greater fulfillment. You may not obtain external fulfillment. Externally, things may the may be the same, but internally the moon will get affected. Okay, 
and internally you will feel that it is worth working. Many times people say that, oh, there's a lot of struggles in life. Well, struggles are there, but you have to be very careful in choosing your struggles, all right? So do not waste uh, this opportunity and uh, let us end the video as usual by reading some verse from the Bhagavad Gita. All right. This is fifth chapter, 21st verse. Such a liberated person is not attached to material sense pleasure, but is always in trance, enjoying the pleasure within. In this way, the self-realized person enjoys unlimited happiness. For he concentrates on the supreme. And let's read the previous verse because it's saying such a liberated person. Okay, so it's like confusing from where it's coming. 5.20 a person who neither rejoices upon achieving something pleasant nor laments upon obtaining something unpleasant, who is self-intelligent, who is unbewildered, and who, who knows the signs of God is already situated in transcendence. Okay. And the next verse, 22 says, an intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery. It's a very famous shloka actually. An intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery which are due to contact with the material senses. O son of Kunti, such pleasures have a beginning and an end and so the wise man does not delight in them. Alright? So... That is what Krishna is telling. Uh, before giving up this 23, before giving up this present body, if one is able to tolerate the urges of the material senses and check the force of desire and anger, he is well situated and is happy in this world. All right. So that is what Krishna is telling that uh, you should not run too much behind materialistic objects beyond a certain limit. Uh, otherwise, you will obtain frustration. All right. So upgrade your relationships. Take it to the next level. Uh, do things which is beyond you, just beyond you and your petty life. Okay. So uh, think about others. Think about the other person. Think about the world. Think about society. Think about your own self, the soul, basically, because charity begins at home. Right. All right, great to uh, make this video. Uh, wish you all the best for the eclipse. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, then please go to my website down below. All right, uh, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him. And if you like this video, please click the thumbs up. And yes, God is there with you all the time. All right.